Joel Mateo is, uh, we could say, <laughs> deputy. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's so many things that I don't know which one to choose first. So he's the deputy minister of education. Okay, he's in charge of all the educational policies in the Ministry of Education of Catalonia right now. He's also the president of the Council for Evaluating the Educational System, which is one of our <coughs> institutions. And he's also a well-known professor at university, specialized in school evaluation. Wow. Okay? So this is why he's here today. <laughs> he's the perfect match for our project. And. Um, she has to leave at 10 because there is a presentation of uh, the PISA study for uh, the next uh, 218, I think. So the, the selection of the schools and all this. And uh, so we asked him to talk about school evaluation from uh, two perspectives, the school perspective and the system perspective, and how we can integrate both things. With all this uh, knowledge, we will try to go to move on our uh, project objectives, and we will try to take this uh, information about school evaluation and how we can use it to evaluate school equity, okay? So it's a kind of continuum with all these things. So um, he's going to speak about school evaluation and then we can also ask him some questions or if you want any more information, he will be pleased to, to give it to us, okay? So thank you very much, Joanne. And thank, thank you very much, Andy, very kind. Uh, uh, I'm sorry again because uh, I'm a professor, but probably I will talk like a, a kid of eight or nine, nine years old because my English is not good enough to, to speak uh, in the level, but probably do the same. But I will help me with uh, the PowerPoint, and I suppose that the PowerPoint and the words uh, can be clear uh, at least part of my thoughts. First, I would like to just before to talk before to talk uh, specifically uh, about the evaluation in the system or in the school is just uh, some previous words talking about the, the conceptual change that uh, have been in the last years in the thinking of evaluation. Uh, evaluation is probably one of the parts of the education science that have changed more in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, a, a couple of thoughts just to uh, uh, framework the, the rest of my speech. That, uh, the two the, the two big changes that have been in the in the evaluation is in first time in first moment conceptual and then in the goals of the evaluation. Conceptually, the traditional evaluation, the context is evaluate the education for a predictable society based in a stable knowledge. What I mean with that? Uh, the knowledge, uh, we, could, we talk about the knowledge society, but uh, the knowledge today is nothing to see with the nature of the knowledge uh, 20 years ago. Uh, the knowledge today, uh, 20 years ago was a uh, stable knowledge, and um, it means that everything that affects the society is very predictable. But uh, this is the context of the, of the traditional evaluation, and the vision is a sectorized vision. Uh, everybody talks about uh, I'm evaluating the system. Now I'm evaluating the school. Now I'm evaluating the kid. 
Uh, this is uh, a partial <coughs> sectorized vision of the valuation. And it belongs to the 20th century and not to the 21st century, 21st century. And the analysis is obviously, if you have this vision of the valuation, the, the analysis is segregated analysis uh, of the valuation information. Okay? Uh, I analyze this power side, uh, uh, the schools, uh, the system, uh, is a linear and isolated interpretation of the information. Okay? I have uh, painted a little bit how is how was the valuation in the last century. But how is now? The now, now, the context is a, a, a very complex society, an uncertain society. Basic, uh, we need to know this society, we need to analyze a great amount of data that generates dynamics and changeable knowledge. I mean that in that moment, uh, um, when we talk about uh, the information, the evaluation information, uh, we are talking about the big data. Yes. And you know, sectorized and small data, we're talking about a lot of amounts of data. And how is the vision? The vision is not isolated, it's integrated. And <coughs> I have uh, drawn this uh, circle, and uh, you see, all the different kind of evaluation, uh, um, environments of evaluation you can uh, imagine, is all in the same uh, circle. And then the analysis is comprehensive, exhaustive, continuous, and interactive. Uh, and I have represent these words in this scheme. Okay? Sorry, the evaluation is uh, focused on the process, like uh, the uh, system uh, ISO yeah. 9001, 2015, the ISO, the, the law of the ISO. The, the, ISO, the quality, the quality, the quality is, uh, ISO. Uh, ISO. I, 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 I'm, I'm not talking about ISO. Not, but it's, uh, it's, uh, Probably ISO is uh, one of the first um, uh, testing oh, about okay. this kind of evaluation. Okay, okay. Thank you. Another change is in the goals. The evaluation in the 20th century, uh, the basic objectives was certification, accreditation, and accountability. Okay? When you talk about evaluation, say, oh, evaluation is just to ask responsibilities to the people that you have evaluated. This is uh, probably is one of the uh, big things in, in the definitions of the evaluation to the older uh, 20th century. Uh, evaluation, which is the whole evaluation? Ask responsibilities to the people uh, after has been uh, evaluated. Uh, and um, after the evaluation, we can certify uh, the quality, or etc. But now, the, of course, these objectives are, um, are practical now, okay. But they are not the most important objectives. The most important of it is in this moment is evaluation is used to construct strategic thinking. Because in a predictable society, you can evaluate the goals just to know which is the next step. But in a certain uh, society, you don't know never which will be the next step. And then it's more important for the people to prepare their mind for a uh, uh, strategic objectives, construct the, 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 the strategic thinking in order to uh, manage uncertainty and complex society. Mm -hmm. You understand the change? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then, for this reason, the basis is construction of the strategic thinking, derivation of the strategic goals, and prepare people guidelines for the management of transformation processes. Uh, this is the, the main objective now in the 21st uh, uh, century. Uh, in that way, uh, <coughs> the view is statical and partial. And in the other one, is global, continuing, and <coughs> dynamic view. I have 
just express in these words the, the main difference between how we conceptualize the evaluation in the past and in the present and in the future. After that, uh, I present now uh, <coughs> the different uh, approaches to the evaluation, in especial to the equity evaluation, uh, from the different um, uh, actors that in this moment evaluate. For example, PISA, then we talk about uh, our, our evaluation of the system, our evaluation of the schools, and uh, little by little we will see how we evaluate, and in especial how we uh, um, try to evaluate equity. How manage this piece? PISA, when after the evaluation, gives to everybody not only the <coughs> average scores, they give also how the different levels of performance of the students. Uh, uh, in PISA 2015, uh, Catalonia arrived to have a 15.7% of people that is in the uh, more lowest level. It means people that don't arrive to, uh, to empower the minimal proficiency in these competences. We have another spaces. This is the, the, the low level, the middle low level, the middle level, the middle high level, and the very high level. Mm -hmm. And this I use the lowest level and the highest level to try to measure the equity and the excellence. And this is the way and the indicator that they use. Yeah? The percentage of the people that don't arrive to dominate the competence is uh, the uh, measure for, say, this in one, um, in one system is equitative or is not equitative. Yeah? In Catalonia, you can see our evolu uh, evolution. In PISA 2076, we have in, uh, in science, eh, in, in science competency, we had uh, 18 points, 18 percent. In 2009, uh, uh, 19. In 2012, 18. And in 2015, 15.7 percent. It means that our system has made an uh, important endeavor to uh, promote equity in the whole system. Uh, usually, PISA say that uh, at the moment that one system arrives that the lowest level arrives to 15%, it, see, it means that the, um, the system is rationally, rationality uh, uh, equitative. Okay? We are uh, very near to arrive to this goal, but we need to follow to work it. Uh, next week, uh, next month, in April, uh, we will have PISA 2018. I expect that we arrive to this level. Okay? Uh, one thing. This is an indicator of equity that use PISA. Okay? This is also a table from PISA. Uh, we have, they have ordered all the countries, but not for the scoring, not for the mean scoring, if not for uh, the lowest level. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see that uh, Estonia is the first one, because uh, he has, nine. I can see, 9% nine. Nine. Nine uh, of the low level. And, uh, Mexico, Mexico is in the other side with 48%. 48% of the people in the, in the educational system in Mexico don't arrive to the minimum level. Uh, can you understand the difference between Estonia? Huh? Two systems and one system attend very well at one side of the population and the other. Uh, 
Catalonia, you can see, is that third, four, five, six, eight. Is it date, eh? With this uh, percentage that I showed you. Okay? Sorry, but uh, for comparing uh, the different uh, countries, we need to have the same evaluation system, the same criteria, because I think that for comparing Mexico is the last one, and must have the same criteria of Estonia. If we don't take care of this topic, it's very difficult to compare. I agree with you. And let me explain it one, one, one story about that. Eh? Uh, um, Pisa use the same uh, test for everybody. Yes. And they compare to the same And uh, it, it uh, only is practical to know where you are. But not for uh, decide uh, what kind of things you must introduce into your, your system. Because the systems are so different that it's difficult to realize. And once I stayed in a, in a PISA meeting in, in South America, and, and they invite the people from Finlandia, you know, in that yes. moment, Finlandia was the first one. Yes. And uh, the Mexican men that explain the results of Mexico stay all the time saying, we are terrible, we are the, the wars in the wall, uh, things like this. And I asked him, uh, please, Vidal is the name of this man. Uh, how many students have you in Mexican system? Say, 40 million. 40 million students. And which is your big problem? My big problem is try that everybody <coughs> are 12 years old in the school and they don't go out of the school. This is my big problem. And I ask to the final lady, please, what do you do if you manage the Mexican system? And the lady said, I suicide me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have answered your question. Yes, thank but you. But you understand the thing. Yeah, I understand. Thank you. Uh, thank it's you. very easy yes. for Estonia, Catalonia, Catalonia, Finlandia, to talk about the results in, the, in using uh, um, a, a instrument, a, a device like PISA, because uh, our uh, this device is has been creative thinking in our civilization and in our system. It's not uh, it's not constructive thinking uh, in the reality of a lot of countries in the world. Okay? Uh, I mean with that that. Uh, PISA is a very good device. It's a very good instrument to think about. But no, it's correct to use them mm -hmm. just like a, a league of the, of the countries yes. uh, fighting each, each one of them. This is uh, um, it's one of the uh, most things that have developed uh, the, 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 the media talking about uh, it's the PISA. best side of PISA. Okay. It's the best side of PISA. That, that's all. I don't know if I have okay, the you, my words. Of course. Uh, this is the same with now with uh, reading. You can see also here what has the evolution in Catalonia. Here we are also close of this 15. That is the objective. And again, the general, uh, uh, this PowerPoint I have let in the, in the in the computer and later my fr my fellows they sent to you. The this is the last math. Uh, this is evolution. Uh, in that case, we are more proud probably than in the other uh, things because uh, in in PISA 20 uh, we we had almost 20 <coughs> people don't arrive to the minimal level in maths but um, in the 26 it was worse but from this moment we arrived to this 70 percent that is three points less and that's for us is okay now i pass i let pizza and i go to our system because we have each year we uh, uh, evaluate all the students 
at the end of the primary school and all the students at the end of the secondary compulsory school. It means all the students of 12 years old and all the students of 16 years old. Uh, it means it's time more than 70,000 students, almost 70,000. Uh, we uh, evaluate <coughs> all these kids each year. Uh, these are the results. These are the results in Catalan, Spanish, English, Catalan language, Spanish language, English language, and maths. Uh, in the, at the end of the primary school, and this is the same results at the end of the secondary compulsory school. In the secondary compulsory school, we have one more uh, competency that is the scientific technology. Uh, you can see the, the points average. We consider that the system arrives at a very good level, a very good level, a correct level, mm -hmm. if the average score arrives to 70 points. And you can see here the points. Uh, for example, in secondary compulsory school, uh, we have more or less good level except in the scientific technological that we are working on. And in the other side, probably, we, if we are online. Okay? And we do the same than PISA. We share all our students in the different levels, and we have a, a, a system goals, goals that we must arrive uh, at the 2018. And if, we, if, if it's not possible in 2018, at least in 2020, we must arrive to the less than 20, 15% here, and we say 30, more than 30% here. This is the national level for us. Uh, and then uh, you can see everyone that we have uh, measured. Uh, this is the last one in the, in the 2017. Uh, and now, uh, in February, we made uh, 2018, and we have results probably next month. And, but this is the last results that we have. Sorry, what do you think about the uh, worst uh, result about the science and math this term uh, in all of Europe? Because uh, this is the very big problem. Yeah, yeah, I know, the European I know. Commission suggests us uh, to mm -hmm. write project uh, about STEM because uh, women doesn't the women don't. Uh, um, uh, choose uh, the at university uh, faculty uh, yeah, yeah. scientific faculties yeah, 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 yeah. and uh, so you're talking about a big problem uh, we have a, 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 a national commission not mm -hmm. only educational commission mm -hmm. it's a national commission about the states because uh, this problem like you say is not only in europe is very it's uh, probably bigger here than in europe uh, 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 at the end of the studies when the people go to the universities we have problem that the people uh, choose uh, scientific uh, areas in the university because they uh, think that they are very hard and not only very hard, they believe that are more interesting uh, the emerging areas in, in another kind of uh, studies. Okay. Uh, I, I know, for example, uh, something like administration or things like this. Uh, and, and at that moment, we are uh, uh, working together with the Department of Universities to try to improve the, uh, the vocational, the vocation of, the, of the, our students. In special, we are working with girls because you know that it's not only a problem, yes. a general problem, it's a very singular problem yes. with girls. Yes. For example, in the engineering careers, it's very difficult to find um, more than 10 or 15 percent of the girls in the studies. Yeah, in medicine, probably we yes. found that 60 or 65 percent of the students are girls, but only 30 or 35 men. But in engineering, informatics, and things like this, the difficult thing is to find girls. There. And then we are talking, we are working just to improve the vocation of the of the whole all the students. And in special, uh, we are working with girls. Uh, trying to demonstrate to them that they are able to do that yes, and, yes. Uh, and, and we, that we did that. Because that the job, a, the, the yeah. labor market required yeah. some, yeah, 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 a yeah, lot yeah. of people 
who are able to, to manage last, last them. Last week, we present um, a study about the, um, I don't know if the word is, is okay, laboral insertion. Mm -hmm. Maybe the people that arrive at the end of the studies and the facility to go and to find the first work. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, 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 in vocational studies, and the people that uh, uh, follow education, vocational studies in things like mechanical, uh, things like this, uh, and, and they use the dual system, system. more than 75% of them found mm -hmm. work before the six months after they left, they left uh, the studies. That's fantastic. Yes, High of course. Or uh, in in the, the, the vocational studies and uh, from the school. This is the institute. Mm -hmm. Okay, I follow. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, again, we use this like an indicator of the education. Yes, of course. Okay. We say that if we work for an equity system, we must uh, guarantee that less than 15% of our students will be situated in this zone. And this is one goal of equity for the two systems. To, to this start, we, all, not, we do, not only make the, uh, the main uh, study, but we also uh, look how evolu evol the evolution of the different subjects during the, the different years to know how is reducing this uh, this level? For example, you have it here. In Catalan, uh, in the 2013, we, we had 11% in the lowest level. In the, uh, in the 2015, 11.1. And in 2017, 11.1. It means that we have arrived at um, a consolidated number and now it's difficult to go down on this. Okay? In this moment, we are changing our goals. Uh, the goal that we fixed in the 13, in the 2013, was 15%. Uh, now we are thinking about to change and to put 10%, because probably it will be the, the goal of the future, because 15% is okay. It's okay in standard uh, numbers in Europe, and in the, in the OCD countries, yeah. that probably for our society is better to think about only 10%. But um, this is uh, evolution in Catalan. This is in Spanish, in Castellano. Uh, and you can see uh, 11%, 13%, and in the last 10%. Uh, foreign language. You know <laughs> that one of the big goals in the whole Europe is that people arrive to know at least one foreign language, uh, uh, a different language than the, the, the <coughs> other language. Um, in the 2013, we had 20% in the low level. Uh, here is 90% and in the last is 40%. Uh, uh, I have passed this year a Cambridge exam for uh, a big um, sample. sample, a big sample in, in Catalonia. And uh, you know that um, in, in the foreign languages we have uh, a level that is A level, A, A1, A2, B1, B2. And in this moment, our students are then of the secondary school, the secondary compulsory school, we have uh, 60, almost 70% with B1 or up B1 certified. Mm -hmm. And um, the European program, the, the European Commission in languages say that the whole Europe, all the countries must arrive in the 2020 that at least 50% of the people arrive to this B1. Um, and using this study, we look inside the study and try to understand what happened uh, for the results in our students. And we discovered two things. That 
probably one of the things that has influenced more in this dramatical change is because in this moment, a lot of students go after the school to uh, uh, academies just to uh, learn a, a English or other languages. Things that 10 years ago was just a exist, but now it's very, very, very good. Uh, 64 percent of our students had uh, more classes of English after the school. The school day. Uh, and another thing is the using of internet. Uh, these two things probably are explaining us uh, why this change probably more than how the quality of our system. Uh, I believe it's also the quality of the system, but we must be very real and then uh, when I saw the, the, the information I see it's not only the system. We, we have introduced new methodologies, you know that now the methodologies in English are very communicative, not as formal as before and um, this has helped the people to develop more quality in English but um, we have the help of another thing like this. But this is important. Uh, I believe this is developed also to the educational system, but not the educational regulated system. And in the case of maths, uh, also the change has been dramatic. In the case of maths, we discover that probably the big problem that we have here is that the students have very few uh, um, exposition to geometry because uh, the geometry was the, uh, for, the, 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 the they forget that the prophets, uh, the teachers forget to <laughs> they put at the end of the book they put at the end of the program and then they never arrive. Eh? you understand what I mean? Yes. Uh, and we say uh, how is possible that the teacher do that when you know that the geometry is the, is the vision of the mathematics with the, uh, how is possible to write to control the language, the mathematical language, without uh, 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 if you don't know anything about the geometry, and then <coughs> we insist with a um, um, a program, um, an open line program for teachers. We uh, ask teachers to go again to study geometry, and after <coughs> they stay one year. Uh, using this program with uh, recommendations, didactical recommendations, how they must teach to the students, and like things like this, uh, they change from 21% to 14%. I don't know if it's the program, if it's, the, it's the, the actualization of the teachers, or probably it's because they discover the importance of the, of the, of the geometry in the mass and they change. Yeah, because when we uh, analyze the, the the test here, we discovered that the, uh, the results in the in the part of geometry was terrible low, and just improving geometry, they change the, the general numbers of that. Well, again, this is our form, our system, to establish some kind of indicators to follow the system and to try that the system must be more equ equitative than before. Eh? Analyze year by year and looking what is happening, what happened in any moment and introduce things in the system to change that. Uh, and we monitor that the system uh, each year doing that. This is another look of equity. Here we have the difference between uh, girls and boys in between the schools with high complexity or low complexity. Uh, I explain that. The first is not is very easy to understand. We compare girls and boys, and you can see that the girls are in Catalan are 3.2, 2.1 better in average than the boys. That is very usual in languages. The girls always are better than, than boys and in math and scientific technology usually is in the country. Okay? We control that, the difference between girls and boys in, a, in special 
for the students. Yeah. Yeah. And what happens with maps and that. And this is another thing that we do, that we have classified all the schools in Catalonia in four levels, and the four levels are different levels of complexity. Uh, after I explain more that, but it means a, a um, high complexity is a center with uh, too much people immigrated, people with uh, low uh, social cultural capital, things like this. And low complexity is the contract. And then, this is our, uh, the big problem. This is not a problem. A difference, I mean, I see big difference at the board, boys and girls have two points. Mm. It's probably, it's not statistically significant. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, can you see? Yeah between a school with low level of complexity and a school with high level of complexity, there is 13 points of difference. Okay? And working with them, we have a right now a 10 points of difference. The reason that we uh, classify the centers for the level of complexity is just to assign later the resources. Uh, one a school that is classified like a very high complexity, they receive more teachers, they have less students in their class, and they have more uh, money for improved programs and things like that. Uh, that is our system to try to, uh, uh, to make a more equitable system. And then we control that with this kind of indicators. Uh, Year by year, we compare high level uh, schools, low level schools, and we have we, we try to change this. And in in this case, uh, when we arrive at levels like this, we we will begin to be uh, white and okay. Eh? <coughs> this is the same before for Scotland. Now it's in Spanish. Boys and girls happen the same, okay. and here, more or less the same. But wait. In English. Yeah. In English. Can you see? Yes. Before it was 12%, 11%, 13%, 24%. Of course, before I say, we have discovered that our students have classes after the school in English. But what kind of students they don't have this opportunity? Do you understand? Okay. And then look at the change. Okay. The difference between the high uh, complexity schools from the low complexity schools is that 24 points. 24 points is approximately more than one course of a studies. They have between one and two courses level less one school to the other types of school. Understand? And well, for you, the important thing is how we manage that. Okay? Exactly. We, uh, the first is to look for an indicator that shows us uh, how to control this and at least to know the problem. And then if we know the problem, the first step to try to resolve the problem. Okay? And now you will see the maps. The math is is better, is better. But ten percent is for me is, is too much. Is better. Uh, probably because the math, um, um, you can imagine, a, a, a foreign people, a immigrant, kid, uh, probably had more problem in the class with the language than with the math because the math is a universal uh, language, and then they can manage better. But uh, in especially in English or in Catalan or in Spanish, they have more problems uh, between high school, high level, high, high complexity, low complexity. But in maths, is probably uh, that the, the, the average problem that we have between these two kind of schools. This is the scientific technological. And um, the scientific technological we began to, to measure this uh, competence in the 60, in 2060. 
porque de otras compas se iban a ser vendidos a Ford Division de Hemor Information. Y de esto no hay que ver la guía de Andy. Y aquí, de nuevo, la diferencia es big. Porque en la competencia científica, it uh, uh, converge to things, the language and the, and the mathematics knowledge. And this, the, the, sum, the sum of the addition of the two things uh, is the explanation that they arrive again to... Uh, Sorry, with this data, you consider also the tools, uh, digital competencies. You consider also the tools because in the, yeah. in the complexity, Uh, the digital component, yeah, I, I, I explained to you. Um, uh, the system that we do to measure um, uh, a competency is first, we must uh, define the, the theoretical framework of the competence. After that, uh, we, from this uh, framework, we uh, prepare the frame, the conceptual framework of the test, of the, of the Practice. The testing that we will do. Mm -hmm. Then we prepare the items of the test. And then we pilot the, the items. And then finally we decide which uh, testing that we have prepared are ready to pass to the people. Mm -hmm. uh, the digital competence, we have just uh, finished the, the framework, the conceptual framework. And we are now uh. preparing. Uh, because, you know, uh, um, mm -hmm. we began uh, <coughs> mentioning only the same competence that this. But now uh, we are introducing a new competence, and probably the next one will be the digital competence. But the digital competence we, uh, is, is a little bit difficult because it's not a linear competence, it's a transversal competence. Mm -hmm. And the form to the, the system to measure is not easy. For this reason, we, we are needing more time just for the techniques to decide how to do that. Uh, sorry, the social context is very important uh, in the com digital competencies because there are school, like you said, the, I don't know in Spain, but in Italy there are school, there is a digital divide mm -hmm. for different kind of, yeah. of motivation. For example, the, 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 the village that are in the mountains, they, mm -hmm. they don't have Wi-Fi. Or they are, they are poor uh, location where there is not there are not money for buying uh, yeah, interactive yeah, yeah, yeah. whiteboard. So in this evaluation, Probably I think that uh, the difference yeah. will be very, very, very uh, very yes, because uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. well, uh, I suppose if you come back in a couple of years, we will have information about digital companies. Yes, yes, you are yes. in the way to that, no? That is important. It's very important, in, in special because you know Barcelona is the mobile. Capital mm -hmm. and then the yes. mobile capital has moved a lot of things. Oh, yes. yeah, for example, for the students have, uh, uh, in the secondary school, they have uh, the, the technical, technological subject, they uh, work with application apps oh, in, in mobile and things like this. And, and then for us, it's very important no? to, to know yes. everything about the digital competence. Now, uh, I have explained. Uh, indicators that use PISA, indicators that we use in our system. Okay. And now we are uh, to uh, take a look at ind indicators of equity. Okay. Uh, I only talk about indicators of equity that we use with the schools. Okay. Uh, after we have recall all the information um, with our uh, general evaluation of the system, we made a, 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 report, and, um, a report for each one of the schools. We send to, to each school our report. And this is one model of report. Uh, here you have each one of the competencies, and then with the explanation what means this competence. And beside, the school receive, which is the score average in Catalonia, which is the score average of the school, the our school, and then if the school In this course, they have uh, two lines. For example, in uh, and then uh, the four course of uh, a secondary, uh, they have uh, four A and four B. Okay? They receive 
the punctuation of the top courses that they have, and also they receive the information that all the average of all the schools with the same level of complexity. Then each school can know which is the own score compared with the general average in Catalonia uh, and with the average uh, score of the schools that have the same level of complexity that them. For this, what is the reason? The reason is easy. It was the first know where you are if you compare with the whole Catalonia. Okay? Uh, also, you must uh, 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 know also uh, uh, which is your level compared with another schools that are in your area and have the same level, complexity level of okay? Because, you know, of all the schools that are in the better places of the city, they usually always arrive to a score that is up of the average in Catalonia, but they need to uh, reflect what happened with them when they compare with the schools with the same resources, uh, uh, I mean uh, human resources that they have. And then when they compare with another schools in the same level, they know where real, really they are. Okay? It's, it's the moment that they take conscience of where they are. Okay? And this is, we send to all the schools this, in this report. This is uh, uh, the five competence, yeah, three before and two now. And also, we send to the school the same indicator that we use, that we use PISA and we use it in our system. Yeah? Sharing all the, all the scores of the schools in percentage, and they, can, they must know where they are in each one of the levels of the uh, proficiency of the, the company. Uh, this school know that in the, this center in the 2017 they had 7.3% of people in the lowest level. In Catalonia, this level is 11.11. And they also received the same punctuation of the year before. Just because they can compare how good they do during the last year. The thing is, the same kind of indicator that you use, the same kind of indicator that we use with the whole system, we translate with the same indicator for each one of the schools because they can uh, uh, reflect about how they are doing in the school, knowing what happens with this. They know how they are working equity and how they are working uh, excellence. Do you understand? Yes. This is the other areas. And well, this is a school that is much better than Catalonia, but uh, is from the 2016 and uh, 2017. Uh, they have to This is in, in math and scientific chronological is the same, the same thing. Uh, we are using this indicator to help them to uh, analyze how they are working uh, from one year to another year, uh, how they are working if they compare with uh, the average in Catalonia. Also, oh, I lose <laughs> one part of this. Uh, yeah. uh, I present you the, uh, a, a, a little summarize of the evaluation that use the inspection in Catalonia, the supervisors. Eh, they have a special model, model that they call ABAC, Evaluation in Catalonia, is the Inspectorate of Education, and because you will be with them, they can explain with more detail everything of the model. But basically, the model of this uh, inspection, uh, uh, they evaluate these three elements. Attainment, school goals, planning and implementation, and equity conditions based on three criteria. Uh, 
the inspectorate <coughs> they uh, evaluate the results of the, of the schools in, in terms of our external evaluation. They take the evaluation that we made for the whole system, they know center by center the scores of the center, and this, they use this information here. You remember that at the beginning of my explanation I say it's important to see the evaluation like something integrated from all the levels. In this moment, the inspectorates are using information of the system to analyze the evaluation of one of schools. They put the external evaluation at the end of the stage. But they use also academic evaluation of the school. It's internal inf information of the school about attainment. They analyze also the school goals. Every school has an educational project with the same goals. And they, they test how the school is uh, uh, attaining these goals. Okay? The degree of compliance of the school goals based on the data analysis. Okay? And finally, probably the, the, the side that you are more interested is they analyze also the equity condition based on the criteria. Uh, absentees is the number of students or the percentage of students that uh, they uh, frequently don't go to the school. Coexistence, each school have, must have a, a, um, a program of how to improve the coexistence between the students and um, the, uh, the inspectorate uh, try to uh, pick up data about the coexistence. What is consistency? And, and also, uh, no, I didn't understand very well what is consistency. Uh, living together. Ah, okay. Eh? How the people prepare. Eh, okay. We call convivencia. Convivencia. In Italian. Parla in catalano, non ti capisco di più. Do you understand the term convivencia? There is no, no, no translation in English. When I look at the translation, I found coexistence, living together. Yes, convivencia in italiano, uguale. Ok, grazie. And finally, inclusion. With programs of inclusion, develop the school. Uh, each school has at least two programs that are programs of the whole system. That is a program of attention to diversity, PIM, and SEP is primary schools. Uh, uh, this is the SEP for primary schools, and the PIM is in secondary schools. Uh, th there are two programs developed by the whole system to attain the diversity, the difference between students. And then the, uh, the supervisor. Uh, ask information about how they are doing that. Uh, how many students are in these programs, uh, how the program is in, in, uh, working in the school, which, which are the results of these students when they are in, inside these programs. And then all this information, um, they have a, 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 a group, a set of criteria to apply for evaluate all this information, and finally, they transform the information once you have analyzed with this criteria in um, the rubrics. They have a rubric system, and then each school is classified in one of, of the rubrics that they have prepared. This is the ABAC, and is the model that the instructor has. Then, you have seen, uh, mm, Indicators of the system PISA, indicators of the system for uh, our system, indicators of our school external, and then here, indicators for our schools internal. Uh, same internal, same external, because the inspectorate work in, in both sides, with internal information and external information. Well, more things. Another, I believe, indicator of equity is analyze the early levels from education. Uh, when early living refers to young people between 18 to 24 that after the compulsory school, they don't do, they don't 
do anything at all after that. I mean, in ten. And, um, they are neat. No. Mm? No, 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 Uh, they, are not, uh, they are not considered liberal. But if they don't do anything at all after that, they are considered liberal from uh, 18 to 24. And then usually each year uh, is made the, the, the administration. Questi del 18 e 24 che non hanno ancora il diploma di scuola superiore. Hanno solo il diploma di terza media. Che hanno dai 18 ai 24 anni il tasso di abbandono scolastico valutato in tutta l'Europa è questo ah, okay. questo è un solo un europeo indicato non sono okay. indicato di formare tutti i casi hanno questo indicato e poi è un altro tipo di guardia che abbiamo fatto in modo di sapere come è il nostro sistema nell'agenda dell'Europa 2020 inclui questo indicato e dicono che probabilmente il valore Uh, the, the correct value is only 10% of these students. Now you can see which, which are our figures. Well, here is that the data is, is taken from the Labour Force Survey. Uh, it's um, a survey that is made each year, uh, each month, because we have this information month by month. Okay? And, and it's a responsibility of the whole administration. Here we have the graphic of Sorry. our situation. Can you clarify something? Those early leavers, those people who are at the end of compulsory education, is after the compulsory education. Do they have already a certificate? Yeah, at the end of the case. No, not necessarily. Uh, most people uh, let the, the secondary compulsory education with some very certification. Okay. But uh, it means that after the, the, in, in one student, after the compulsory education, maybe uh, one course or several courses in not compulsory education, they are not able to uh, be here because they have a studies after that. But if a, a student left the system uh, after the compulsory education and they don't do anything at all uh, during these six years in 1824, Then they are considered the university. And you can see our problem. In the 2002, we had 31% of livers. And arrived 2034, just in the 2008, we arrived almost to 33. It means that at least one third of our students don't follow with any kind of studies after finish the compulsory studies. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, uh, well, it's dramatical, you know. Uh, from the 2008 away, everything is going down, and in this moment, in the 2017, we have 17.1. Uh, we have analyzed the reasons of we pass from 33 to 17%. One reason is the crisis, the economic crisis. Because what happened in the 2008? Mm -hmm. That the people at 16 years old was very easy for them to find a job. And a job is, is even with very well paid, uh, working in a hotel in the Costa Brava, they can win 2,000 euros a month. And then this is an effort terrible to convince this boy to follow uh, training himself, because 
why I have more than I need. Uh, what happened in the 2008, the crisis? And then, in the moment that they don't found any job, and if they found jobs, they are very bad paid. Because in this moment, the same waiters in the Costa Brava received 800 euros and not 2,000 like in the 2008. You understand? And then, uh, because this effect, they return to the school. And then you can see how it's dropping the line in year by year. But in the 2013, uh, the crisis stopped. And then now we have year by year more, uh, uh, have reduced uh, that, uh, uh, the problems in, in the labor problems. They have more uh, places in, in the, of work. But what is happening? That they have learned another thing from the crisis. That now, if you are, if you are not well prepared, you will be not able to find a very good job. And then uh, we have increased the places of the vocational training. We have increased the, the, the image and the, and the quality of this kind of studies, studies and also with the, uh, uh, the, the, the crisis effects uh, have made that year by year we are reducing the number of labors. Uh, we expect to follow point by point uh, following this, uh, this uh, sensation that go down and we expect to arrive to 10% in, in, in four or five years. It's our expectation. Okay? This is another indicator of equity. <coughs> it's impossible to have an equity system with 34% uh, of labor. Labors. This is the same, but now by uh, boys and girls. Okay. You can see the boys drop out more than girls. Okay. Uh, probably you know this happened the same in our countries mm -hmm. because uh, the girls um, feel better in the school than boys at this age. I, I explained before that we classify our schools for complexity. Uh, the problem to classify the schools of, for complexity is to find a criteria to do that. Okay? Because we had a classification from 20 years ago and was made by the inspectorate, but they visit the schools, they talk with the, uh, the headmaster of the schools and they decide if the school is A, B, C or E. But now we have a, a mathematical program that do that. And the work of the inspectors is uh, just to verify if the uh, orientation of our program is correct or not correct. But uh, in this moment, we can do that every year, and we can uh, uh, and you can uh, actualize the information year by year. It's about better than the other one that we need probably seven or eight years to change uh, the classification of the schools. Uh, what we do for the program? We analyze these three elements. Parents' educational attainment level from the census, parents' labor activity from the social security register, and parents' birth count so from the census. We use information about these three things. Uh, uh, we, uh, we go to the census with the ID of the family, and the census say uh, which is the, uh, the training level of the parents. Uh, we go to the social security register and they say if the parent is working and the level of the working that they are doing. And in the census, give us also uh, where is the country of birth of this family. With all this information, we have 
uh, indicators of all these things. Paris Education Attainment Level from the census. Paris Labor Activity from the Social Security. No, I didn't say no. Yeah, foreign students. Here we have the values. Mean value of parents' education attainment. Percentage of illiterate parents. Percentage of parents with a university degree. Mean value of parents' language status. Percentage of parents with low demanding jobs. Percentage of parents from poor countries. And percentage of foreign students. We have this information for each school by school. And then with all this information, we are able to analyze the information and to decide where is classified each one of the centers. We use for that, we use for that a factor analysis, a principal component analysis that allows us to situate all the centers uh, uh, situated for reference of the axis and the axis are uh, the two big things that I said before. Uh, uh, in the, for the training of the parents, the, the type of work or job that they have, and with this, situate each one of the schools. And then it's easy to, be, to decide uh, each one of the schools in which a um, classif a good type uh, must be um, uh, definitely. Eh? Okay? Uh, this mathematics uh, uh, factor analysis allow, allows us year by year using and changing the information about each one of the parents, classify the parents and then the centers, okay? Uh, I said before that classify the centers is not just a question to know which kind of, of, of uh, complexity level of the center. It's also one of the pieces more important, more important that we have to decide how to distribute the resources. Okay. Uh, uh, the whole house, I mean the whole department, uh, know that when they receive a uh, demand from one school, if the school is situated in, in one or in another uh, level of complexity, they have right to ask this and we must look for resources for them wherever we found them that we want to. It's by law that we must do that. Okay? And uh, I understand that the complexity level of the schools can be another indicator for to decide the, the equ equity politics. Finally, and this is just, I promise, is the last thing, uh, for the future, we are developing now an observatory for equity in the educational system. Uh, this is the thing that we are uh, um, now trying to prepare. Uh, it was supposed that we, will, we must finish this in, in September 2017, but you know the problem that we had. Uh, and because we had a government and we had anything at all, then we must uh, prepare this at the end of this course when we suppose we will have um, the government and we can put um, resources for develop our observatory. Uh, the observatory for equity is prepared. Okay, you is uh, provide the Department of Education with an instrument for consultation <laughs> and advice for educational policies from the equity and equal opportunities perspective. Is to, uh, to be meeting point of social researchers, educational agents, and policy makers to formulate proposals about equity and social cohesion from the point of view of education. Everything I have explained before is what we have do using the information of the past. Okay? And this means that we must put together gen and people that can think about the system in terms of equity and they, they can help us to think about the future. Yeah? Uh, uh, how it will be in the future uh, the definition of equity, of equity and what kind of things uh, they believe that we must do to transform our society in a more equity society, more equitative society. 
and this is the reason of the Sotato. Sì, eh, is to analyze information and to give us the guidance for develop our system in terms of energy. This is the, the, the main reason. <coughs> This is the, the goals of the observatory. Describe, analyze the social reality of schools, collaborate with universities and research centers in order to promote research in terms of equity and equal opportunities, to bring knowledge to stimulate adversarial policies against inequality and social exclusion for different departments of the Catalan government and public administration, to promote the design, implementation, and evaluation of a strategic action to advance in terms of equity and inclusion, to uh, drive actions aimed of achieving the involvement of society in the implementation of compensatory policies, and the foster the usefulness and dissemination and evaluation in the educational system from the perspective of equity. These are the goals that the observatory will have in the future. Mm -hmm. And that's all. Uh, I support, oh no, please. <laughs> I, I suppose uh, uh, it can give you some ideas about what to do during these days, uh, at least in terms of to find indicators that can be uh, important for us for the future. Okay? Thanks to you for the, the task that you are doing. Uh, and I said, like I said the first day, I we hope. I hope uh, your conclusions because it will uh, help me a lot uh, to decide this kind of things. Thanks a lot to you and good days here. Okay? Any questions? Do you want to have any questions or? Uh He's going to leave us now to work because he's got another meeting. <laughs> I have 150 people from the different schools that they, they, they are selected to, to make PISA 2018. Uh, the only thing is I will speak the Catalan is <laughs> less hard than, <laughs> than in English, okay? Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, okay, so let's go back to work. Okay, so just uh, five minutes, okay, to if you want to go to the toilet or something, we stop the recording, that's right.